You know, the Times, Barry McGuire once sang, the Times, they are a changing. Some people know how to adapt to the Times and the seasons and the years that they live in. And some people just let life hit them between the eyes and really don't pay much attention to what's going on. They kind of get surprised by a hurricane or a fire, by a pestilence. You know, I, I've been kind of paying attention a little bit. Not much, because I kind of got rid of most of my cable network news and got rid of most of my national news because I deal with that already anyways. So I really don't need to hear it from people who are trying to sell me, you know, the news in some prepackaged format. But, you know, I kind of was thinking about it the other day and living in the last days, you know, you, you kind of notice things, you know, like, well, West Nile virus, you know, the viruses are bigger, you know, this year than they've ever been. Ooh, that's interesting. Or that, uh, you know, it's been a hotter month last month than ever before recorded in history. Ooh, that's interesting. Or that, wow, we've got, you know, like, hurricanes coming in. Though they come every year, just happens to be right in the path of some of the conventions. Ooh, that's interesting. Or that we're in a drought, you know, and it's right in the breadbasket of where most people count on getting their food from. Ooh, that's interesting. You know, I find it interesting. <laughs> that drought, famine, pestilence, even flooding, which in Vegas, I guess, has happened because there's been like flash floods because of all this kind of like weather systems, you know, things are changing. I've noticed also that in the news, there's been these huge fires that are like, wow, every year there's fires, of course, and every year there's floods, but this year there's been some really phenomenal extra Hmm. burning of like a lot of forestry land and wow that's interesting so you have pestilence flood fire famine kind of wonder what's going on don't you i mean i guess i could just go along with the whole idea that well you know been there done that it's happened before and it's sure to happen again but you know When I drink my coffee and I wake up, I begin to pay attention a little more to what's going on around me. You know, at first I may just flip on the TV and, you know, get bombarded with that. Or at least I used to, I don't anymore. Or I may just, you know, kind of like grab a hold of, you know, some kind of quick input, you know, from my smartphone or from my news alerts. I don't do that anymore. Because you see, I've been sitting down in the Word of God and I've been reading about famines and floods and pestilence. I've been reading about fires and major catastrophes when they come upon a nation, when they are happening to a people. When God chooses to intervene in the heart of a nation and direct his attention towards that nation, and to do things to get their attention. He uses famine and flood and pestilence and disease and earthquakes and fires. Matter of fact, what man calls natural, God says, look at me. I'm the one who made the natural. I kind of find that interesting. That the signs of the times are all about us. That we can either notice them and pay attention to what's happening in our 
world or even in our own land or maybe even in your own community right now as you see violence in more dramatic ways than you've probably ever seen before. I mean, where I live today, every night there's a murder. Every night. Because I live next to Stockton. You know, I'm not in Stockton, but I live next to Stockton. But the news reports kind of the area, you know, like Sacramento County and, you know, all the other counties that are around us. And because it does, I can tell you every single night that I watch the local news, there's a report of a murder. That's interesting. Every night, a murder. I mean, no questions asked. Every single night. And I can document it, which is interesting to me. So, in my local area, even, I can tell times they are changing. It is signs of the times that violence is becoming more violent. And the interesting thing is the murders are all done with guns, of course. And people say, well, you, what are you going to do, bring up that debate about whether you have the right to bear arms? Well, I have the right to trust in the Lord with all my heart, leaning not to my own understanding and all my ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct my path. And if God told me to get a gun, I probably would. But you see, I don't see anyone telling me, Jesus said, go get a gun. Never. That's interesting to me. Has He told you? Now, in these times that we live in, it's easy to make up connections. You know, kind of look at the overall big picture and say, oh, no, the sky is falling. You know, and maybe, maybe the sky isn't falling, but maybe God is calling some of us to wake up and pay attention to the signs of the times. Because the world is changing and it's not happening in a better way so I don't know if you have children and I don't know if you have you know a nice church that you live in and a nice wonderful life that's going on and you don't want to rock the boat but God's about to rock the world and it's going to happen in your generation and it's going to happen very very soon and if you're not paying attention to the signs of the times not only is it going to hit you like a brick, you're probably going to be either evacuated or your house is going to be burned down. Jesus warned of these days and he said, I will liken these days unto a man who built his house upon sand, that had he done the things that I said, his house would have been upon a rock, but since he didn't pay attention to what I said to do, his house is built upon sand and the storms came and they blew upon that house and it was cast down and how great was the destruction thereof. But he also gave hope about these times. He said, but the man whose house was built upon a rock, he did those things that I told him to do. He listened to these sayings of mine. He was the one who kept these sayings of mine and attempted to do them. Him I will liken unto a man who built his house upon a rock. The storms of life came, but that house stood all the onslaught. Now, I guess, if you were like me, you'd want to know what these sayings of mine are that Jesus talked about, that the difference between the two men was whether they kept the sayings Jesus said or whether they didn't do what Jesus said. And the funny thing is, is the Sermon on the Mount is what he said. Love your enemies. Because at the beginning of the sermon, it starts off with what he tells them to do. And at the end of the sermon, it warns what happens if you don't do them. It's kind of like the signs of the times. You're looking at the warnings. And whether you do them or not will determine what happens to your life. What happens to your family. What happens to your world as God's rocking the boat. And you need to either learn to walk on water or you're going to find out real fast that the boat is sinking and you're going down with it. It doesn't take a genius to figure out the signs of the times are all around you. Whether it be the breakdown of the family or the way the church is kind of like going off on this, you know, money and prosperity thing when people are starving. It's kind of like, what? What's up with that? Or, you know, how the church is kind of like sometimes gone off on a tangent where it's saying like, oh, we're not one of those. What? What's up with that? 
you know, but the church used to be like where you came when you were in need. Where the poor and needy, the destitute, those that were crying out would come and find shelter. You know, like the homeless, the street people, those that wouldn't be acceptable in society. The question is, when you see these signs that are happening, are you paying attention to them or are you just flying down the freeway of life, ignoring all the road signs that are up there and you're just barreling down 100 miles an hour and just <laughs> flying by, not noticing the pestilence, the West Nile virus, AIDS, the epidemic, cancers. Oh, sure, we are learning how to prevent them. We're learning how to deal with them. We're learning how to deal with Alzheimer's. And we're learning how to deal with all the other consequences of our own actions that maybe we caused, you know, like ADD, PTSD, you know, some of these stresses that are upon our society that had we known and done what Jesus said, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Perhaps those who are ill would not have fallen so. It may be that we have seen the signs of the times that God is trying to warn us. But I can tell you something for sure. There is no doubt. The end of the world has come. Whether you know how long or how short it is, is based upon how much you pay attention to the signs of the signs. Because you see, a woman kind of like can ignore being pregnant until she starts vomiting. Then it kind of gets her attention. You know, like throwing up in the morning, morning sickness. A woman can kind of like ignore morning sickness, pretending that it's something else, until, you know, her belly begins to swell and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. She can even ignore her belly getting bigger, claiming that it's some other thing, until she just can't do the same thing she used to do. And then the first birth pain comes with the kicking, and it just seems pretty obvious, well, of course you're pregnant, but that person could still keep denying it. Until those birth pains are so painful that it's obvious, or that the water bursts, and then it's time. Jesus said, you can tell the weather. You look at the clouds and you see, oh, they're dark and they're building and they're, they're like big bulbous ones. They look like they're just ready to burst full of water. Or you can see like long streaks of it, you know, coming down, you know, off in the horizon and it's winds blowing your way. And you can tell the rains are coming. They're coming. They're right on the horizon. He said, if you could tell the weather, just by looking at the clouds. Why can't you tell the signs of the times? Why don't you know it's the end of the world? I guess that's my problem today, is that I've known ever since Israel became a nation that, hey, the end of the world's here. And I just read recently that there's a huge movement of famous Christians that don't believe that Jesus is coming in our generation. Oh, we, 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 we teach, you know, that Jesus could come at any time, but not this soon. You know, we say that he's coming any moment now, but not really, because we've already planned out our lives. We say that we believe, but we don't act like it, because we've got all these other plans that... After all, you know, we need, we need to be occupied before he comes. You know, we've got to set up the kingdom that God wants us to set up for him. Jesus said something that I find very interesting. If any man come after me, let him deny himself. In America, one of the hardest things that any Christian ever learns to do to deny himself because Christianity hasn't been teaching it lately we teach the gospel to come to Jesus and he'll give you a wonderful life we teach that bring 
me your worries and cares and I will give you my peace. Bring me all your other problems and I will give you my life and you'll have a wonderful life. And that God will bring a blessing. God will send a joy. God will send this, that, and the other thing. But you know, the gospel hasn't been taught deny yourself. When's the last time you heard someone stand up beside some legalist and say, you know, I think, I think I'm a little selfish, you know, and I think I need to give up something in order to get something from God. I need to give up my life and my rights to my life and my rights to my guns and my rights to my privileges and my rights to myself in order to follow Jesus in these latter days because I think Jesus wants me to do the things he said so that when the storms of life hit and they're hitting now when the judgments of God come upon the world and they're hitting now that I could be like the children of Israel who said whoa we need to get in shelter we need to go under the covering we need to put and do like God said to do the blood of the lamb over our doorposts and lintels so that the angel of destruction will pass over us the signs of the times are all about you what you do about them is up to you. You can ignore it. Just like when the evacuation order comes. You can look around and say, Oh, I see the smoke. There must be fire. I smell the smoke. There must be fire. I can feel the heat. There must be fire. I can see the flames. There must be fire. You think I should maybe like evacuate now? Or you could be prepared and be aware when you're told to get out that you do before your house gets burned down. Because by the time you wait to see the smoke, the fire, the flames, and it comes rushing up that hill blown by the wind, you're liable to die. And that's what will happen. If you aren't getting ready for Jesus in return. You aren't going to be with him. You are going to go into the Great Tribulation. And you probably will deny him in that time. Because if you haven't yet chosen to accept and do the things he said, he promised you will not survive the Tribulation period. But if you are seeking him in some ways, trying to walk with him in a humble way, praying that God would spare you these things that are coming upon the world, then God may spare you the Great Tribulation. And if He doesn't, then He may help you to overcome all that's come upon the world, the devastations. But you see, it all still goes back to that one thing that Jesus said, the one thing that He told us. Are you doing what I said? This man who does these sayings of mine, him I will liken unto a man who built his house upon a rock. Because when the storms of life came, his house stood. I don't have to look very far to see the signs of the times. I don't have to look at the news. I don't have to look beyond my own flesh, my own observations of the people around me my own church, my own heart, my own people, my own land, my own place that I work and live and exist and have my being, my own God and His own Spirit. I don't have to go very far to know. It's in the world. Hell is coming. And hell on earth will be here. Literally. For season, Satan is given a time when Hell on earth breaks loose, and you won't survive it. You weren't intended to. You weren't created for hell. You weren't meant to go through hell. But hell on earth will happen very soon. Before it does, there's some little bit of deception that goes on, and you'll fall for it. Because God said you would. He said he would send strong delusion that they should believe a lie. I would suggest in these times we live in 
that for such a time as this, we would do well to heed the call, pay attention, do the things that Jesus said, deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow Jesus. Because unless you do, you will not live through the signs of the times you're facing today.